Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. In this video, I am going to summarize few points about the iodine titration. And iodine titrations, as you know, are of two types. One is iodometric titration and the other one is iodimetric titration. So here in this video, I am going to summarize few differences and similarities in these two types of titrations and what is the difference actually. So here first you see the name of these two different type of titrations of iodine titration. So one is iodometric titration and the other one is iodimetric titration. Here what is the difference in the spellings? So in the spelling it is O and in the spelling of iodimetric titration it is I. So here this is important to relate. The first point I have summarized here is the iodometric method is used to determine oxidizing agent. So here you can easily memorize this that iodometric is related to the oxidizing agent. Whereas iodometric titration is just opposite to the iodometric titration. So here you can easily understand if iodometric is for oxidizing agent then iodometric is for reducing it. The second point which is important here. Iodometric titration is an indirect titration method and iodimetric titration is a direct titration method. So here I will just elaborate it with the animation as well as with the lab activity how it is indirect method. But here before going into that I will just bring to your notice that indirect titration method is something different as compared to the back titration method right. So indirect is something different, back titration is something different. Now coming to the third point, this is just an elaboration of this uh, point. So in iodometric titration, iodine behaves as an intermediary that has been formed as a result of prior redox reaction and it is titrated against the reducing agent which is well known reducing agent as sodium thiosulfate solution. In iodimetric titration, an iodine solution is directly titrated with a reducing agent. In the iodometric titration, the total number of redox reaction is of 2, whereas in iodimetric titration, it is of only one redox reaction involved. The most important point is that iodometric titrations are commonly applied to several experiments, whereas iodimetric titrations are limited. And in both iodine solution is easily standardized by sodium thiosulfate or arsenic oxide. Here are few examples which we can determine by this iodometric and iodimetric titration. So here I have summarized few of the oxidizing agent which can be determined by iodometric titration and some reducing agents which can be determined by iodimetric titration. Now coming to the animation part first and after this animation I will just give you the lab activity. So here what we said in our first step that iodometric titrations are related to the oxidizing agent. So first I will just tell you here in iodometric titration analyte is oxidizing agent. So first I take oxidizing agent now to this oxidizing agent I'll just add axis of potassium iodide solution you can use or you can directly use the solid form of potassium iodide. This potassium iodide on adding to this oxidizing agent here I have summarized few oxidizing agents so K2Cr2O7, hydrogen peroxide, potassium permanganate, copper sulfate, manganese sulfate etc are few oxidizing agents which we can determine through this iodometric titration. You can choose any of these analyte so first here I have chosen potassium dichromate for analysis so this is my potassium dichromate and to this I have added potassium iodide. On addition of potassium iodide to this in acidic medium it converts to iodine here iodine is liberated and which has this dark brown color this iodine which is produced over here is titrated against the reducing agent which I am going to show you in the next slide but before that I'll just bring to your notice that this is one redox reaction between the oxidizing agent or our analyte plus potassium iodide one redox reaction takes place to produce iodine this is first step in the second step this iodine which is liberated in a stoichiometric proportion of the analyte is titrated against 
the sodium thiosulfate solution here i have taken sodium thiosulfate solution in the burette and this iodine which is liberated on reaction with oxidizing agent to potassium iodide i'll just going to titrate when the color is faint to this we are going to add the starch indicator and on adding the starch indicator the color of the analyte becomes purple this is we can say iodine on reaction with starch will form starch iodide complex which is of purple color so here on titration we will get this purple color of the reaction mixture will disappears here i have written this iodine on reaction with reducing agent which is sodium thiosulfate here it is again a second redox reaction and it produces iodine ion which is colorless and in that manner we will determine the final reading of the sodium thiosulfate solution or how much sodium thiosulfate solution is consumed of no normality so in this manner we are going to calculate the concentration of iodine which is produced and to that we are just relate with the oxidizing agent and in this manner indirectly we determine the concentration of the analyte so that is why we call it indirect method of titration here two redox reactions are involved in the iodometric titrations indirectly we determine the concentration of the analyte so that is why we call it indirect method of titration whereas in iodometric titration we fill our burette with the iodine solution and we directly take our analyte which is a reducing agent here it oxidizes this iodine and turns it color from dark brown to colorless right so here in this manner you can determine the end point of this reaction so only one reaction is involved first secondly it is a direct method iodine is reacted with the reducing agent or our analyte it is a titrant it is an analyte whereas in previous case analyte is oxidizing agent which reacts first produce iodine and uh, this iodine on reaction with sodium thiosulfate will give the indirect method of determining the oxidizing agent or analyte here few are the analytes which can be determined through this iodometric titration here few examples and their reactions i have summarized for your information so iodometric titration is used to determine the copper ions chlorate ions hydrogen peroxide manganese and uh, this iodometric titrations are used to determine the ascorbic acid this is the reaction of ascorbic acid h2s and nh2 can also be determined through this method by the question which indicator is used in iodometric titration and iodometric titration so in iodometric titration starch is used as an indicator so what is the color change color changes from purple dark blue or purple to colorless in iodometric titration since iodine is used as an titrant so it is having brown color so brown color to the color change is blue blue is because of the starch solution we use starch solution to the analyte then it turns to blue otherwise the color of the iodine appears so here again by iodometric titration is called indirect titration so that i explained already and here is the reaction i hope guys you find this video helpful and you understand the concept which i have discussed here please give me a thumbs up like share and subscribe thank you all thanks for watching